Using recycled fiber in grades of paper and paperboard that have minimum visual requirements is relatively easy. But what if we wanted to make recycled pulp for a grade which has brightness and printability requirements? Newsprint is a good example. Newsprint makes up about 11% of all paper and paperboard produced worldwide, which amounts to about 36 million metric tons produced per year. In North America, 50% of all old newspapers, referred to as ONP, are recycled, making this the second most commonly recycled paper grade behind OCC. ONP may be used in a number of grades other than newsprint, such as gypsum wallboard and cereal boxes, where poor appearance can be hidden with a top layer of cleaner pulp. But what about the reuse of ONP in newsprint or tissue grades? The answer from a process point is, you need to do all the pulping, cleaning, and screening that was described for OCC, but you also need to do several other steps. One is de-inking, and the other is brightening. Let's start with de-inking. Printing ink makes up as much as 1 to 2% of the total ONP, so that ink, if allowed to stay with the pulp, would result in low brightness as well as numerous ink specks on the final paper. So what's the best way to remove the ink from the fiber? Well, we have two options. We can try to wash it off the fibers, or we can try to float it off the fibers. In some processes, use both techniques. De-inking really begins in the pulper. Pulpers that are designed for de-inking can run in batch or continuous mode, depending on whether it's a tub pulper or a drum pulper, and at high consistency, usually between 18 and 20% consistency. Pulp at these consistencies looks like bread dough and it's thick enough that you can walk on it, but please don't try to. The fiber to fiber rubbing action along with chemicals which are added help loosen the ink from the fiber. Once a batch of pulp has been processed in the pulper, it has to be diluted from high consistency to around 4 to 5% consistency so the pulp slurry can be pumped to the next steps in the process. After cleaning and screening to remove as much ink and other contaminants as possible, the pulp is mixed with a surfactant and pumped to the de-inking cell. In the ink flotation cell, air in the form of very small bubbles is mixed with the pulp slurry at around 1% consistency, and the ink particles attach themselves to the air bubbles. The foam that forms on the surface of the stock contains the ink particles, and this foam is skimmed off to separate the ink from the good fibers. Flotation de-inking is usually followed with more cleaning and screening to remove additional contaminants. Here is another flotation de-inking cell. You can see that the design may be different, but the principle is the same. In flotation, the critical operating parameters are controlling the bubble size, which is a critical part of the design of the cell's air injectors, and getting the ink particles to the right size so that the bubbles can carry them away. Some de-inking plants have two stages of flotation with a dispersion stage between them. Dispersion is a way to mechanically remove more ink from the fibers. The first flotation stage removes the softer inks that are loosened in the pulper, and the second one after dispersion removes the harder inks that need to be loosened from the fibers by the high consistency rubbing action of the dispersion step. Dispersion machines are either kneaders or refiners. Kneaders have two large screws rotating in opposite directions that impart a lot of shear on the pulp. Refiner-type dispersers have two discs, one which rotates and one which is stationary. As the pulp moves between the two refiner discs, the shear on the pulp knocks the ink particles loose from the fibers. In either case, the effect is to apply a lot of power to the high-consistency pulp slurry so that the fibers rub together, forcing the ink to break down into microscopic particles that can be removed by the next steps in the process. Another option for de-inking is washing. Chemicals are mixed with the pulp, which cause the ink to emulsify in much the same way that you'd wash oil or grease from your hands. Once the ink is soluble, it can be washed from the fiber on side hill screens or other washing equipment. It usually takes several stages to effectively wash the ink from the pulp. Washing efficiency depends mostly on how much ink-laden water is removed. As you can see, recycled paper is a prime source of fiber for the paper industry, and we're nearly at our goal of recovering 50% of all paper used in the U.S. That's almost 50 million tons of paper that doesn't end up in the landfill. However, recycling of paper creates problems as well as solutions. 
It's important to remember that the more the pulp is processed, the greater the losses in both contaminants and fiber, and the lower the yield. De-inking removes a lot of small fibers as well as ink particles, and this sludge must be properly disposed of by landfill. For example, the yield for a de-inked pulp may be 70% or less. That means 30% of the waste paper that entered the mill ends up being hauled back out of the mill as sludge. Processing chemicals are also expensive, and recycled pulp may end up being as expensive or even more expensive than higher quality craft pulp. From a pure processing standpoint, recycling is most efficient when the waste paper is reused in paper products which don't have as high appearance requirements. This is the end of the lesson on recycling of paper. Recycling begins with the collection of waste paper and paperboard. By keeping contaminants out of the waste, 